Generative AI tools are quietly but profoundly reshaping software development. They automate code generation, reduce errors, and allow developers to prototype faster. But how exactly are leading enterprises using AI? And how does it enhance developer productivity in real-world projects? In this podcast, we delve into these topics, exploring the current opportunities and the potential future of AI augmented software development. Hi, my name is Paul Ma, and in the room with me, I have Chun Wei Wu, Public Sector ASEAN Technical Lead Team Lead from AWS, Rajesh Rao, Managing Director of Technology at Timus, and Rahu Huku, Director of Cloud Practices and Application Engineering, Timus. Thank you for joining us today, gentlemen. I've heard a lot about how some software developers have benefited tremendously from generative AI. So if I may jump straight in, how exactly are enterprises leveraging AI in software development today? Thanks, Paul, for the question. Hi, everyone. My name is Chun Wei, and I look after the solutions architecture function for public sector ASEAN and AWS. Uh, in that role, we aspire to be the trusted advisor for our customers by working backwards from their business and technology need, understanding what it is, uh, and or then orchestrating the relevant AWS technology capabilities to help address their mission outcomes. Mm -hmm. Great question, Paul. Uh, the rise of generative AI has certainly ignited this interest. And one of the areas that's moving fast is how AI can be used to transform the way developers get work done. Uh, developers tell us that approximately 30% of their time is spent on coding, while a good proportion of that can be spent on tedious and repetitive tasks. This could be researching best practices, understanding code bases that they have taken over. We've all been through that, right? Uh, testing refactoring code, uh, or applying security fixes from vulnerability scanning. Earlier in April this year, uh, AWS announced the general availability of Amazon Q. Amazon Q is a tool that assists developers and IT professionals with all of their tasks, from coding, testing, and upgrading applications, to troubleshooting, performing security scanning fixes, and of course, optimizing AWS resources. Customers such as Toyota, PT Group, was on the pilot preview, have been using Q to increase developer productivity and speed up innovation in their organizations. In fact, Timus was also one of our preview customers. Uh, Rajesh, perhaps you could share what were some of the experiences in using Amazon Q. Thank you, Chun Wei. My name is Rajesh Rao, and I'm Managing Director of Technology at Timus. In this role, I'm responsible for bringing in latest technology to solve customers' business problems. I have been a te deep technologist for more than 30 years, and I firmly believe that generative AI will completely transform traditional software development. At Teamus, we call this next generation software development lifecycle. Our goal is to leverage technical experts to solve difficult technical problems while using generative AI tools for the tasks which Chunwe mentioned, which are like repetitive and tedious, which the developers don't want to do. And these are the tasks like creating the plumbing, infrastructure, testing, deployment, and other routine tasks. From a big picture perspective, our vision is to automate as much of the software development lifecycle as possible and increase the productivity of developers, which results in creating of high quality and highly secure code. We have made numerous inroads in this process, and my colleague Rahul will explain this to you. Thank you very much, Rajesh. My name is Rahul Luku, and I'm the Director of Cloud and Application Engineering here in Timus. I agree very much with the benefits that generative AI technologies are bringing in for the whole of software development lifecycle and how they are making us reimagine how to build better, faster software for our customers. At Timus, we have gone a few steps ahead, and what we did towards the end of last year was to create a small team uh, called Quantum Mind, where we brought in a bunch of developers and cross-functional experts, uh, and their core job was to look at different kinds of use cases, which can be applied to our all uh, daily projects um, and the, to solve challenges with uh, the, the delivery of software for our customers. In some cases, we saw developer productivity had a great boost all the way up to 45% increase. And this has been now very quickly been replicated by other teams within Timus. I'm curious, Rahul, was, was it something that happened quickly or did they have to take some time before they got up to speed? 
So very good point, Paul. Actually, it did take us a while and a few iterations, like any adoption of any new technology. So what we had to do was we had to look at the biggest pain points in the entire SDLC. As example, one of the areas where most of our engineers were spending time was creating automated testing cases, right? And as you know, that is a very time-consuming manual part of the SDLC. So one of the things that we are using Amazon Q4, for example, is to generate automated unit test cases now. And this is almost being fully automated using the tool. Wow, fantastic. Maybe Chun, Chun Wei might want to add it. Well, there's special examples of where generative AI has significantly enhanced developer productivity. Generative AI can improve the software development lifecycle in a number of ways. Firstly, as Rahul has, Raja has spoken earlier, it increases efficiency and productivity by speeding up coding processes, reducing time spent on repetitive tasks. Secondly, it can also improve code quality by predicting and fixing bugs early in the development cycle, reducing the likelihood of human error. One of our customers, British Telecom, they have actually seen strong code suggestion uh, mm -hmm. acceptance rates of over 37%. Uh, what this translates to is over 100,000 lines of code that the developers didn't have to write by hand, allowing them to accelerate development, have more bandwidth uh, and headspace to focus on more strategic projects. Uh, one of the unique features of Amazon Q is a capability called Agents. And what it does is that it can autonomously perform a range of tasks. This could be implementing features, documentation, or refactoring code. In fact, one of the key features is to automate and manage the entire software upgrade process. Java conversions are available today and .NET conversions are coming soon. As an example, a five-person team at Amazon using Q was able to upgrade over a thousand production applications from Java 8 to 17 in just two days. The average time per application was less than 10 minutes compared to days previously. This obviously saved a significant amount of development time. Wow, I mean, from days to minutes, that's, that's quite a huge leap ahead in productivity. Yes, it is indeed. I'll share some experiences from Timus. At Timus, as Rahul mentioned, we have got more than 45% increased developer productivities by leveraging Amazon Q. More importantly, from my perspective, the code is highly secure because the code is automatically generated and it's compared against OWASP guidelines. The second important thing is the code is easily maintainable because the standards are enforced by the tool. And finally, it allows developers to focus on the difficult technical challenges because Amazon Q takes care of the routine and repetitive tedious tasks, which Chun Wei had mentioned before. At Teamus, we also have a very interesting concept called a personal AI technical lead. Normally, a project team has a technical lead and the developers go to the technical lead to get clarifications and to solve their problems. This technical lead always has constraint in terms of how much time he can spend with the other developers. Now with this personal tech lead, which is an AI component, which is basically the Amazon Q working very closely with the developers, mm. the developer doesn't have to go to the human tech lead, but on a day-to-day -day basis, they can leverage the tool to get their things done. Only mm. for very difficult and challenging technical problems, they can go to the human tech lead and then have that in dialogue, discussion, design, and then clarifications on that. Rahul can explain more about this. As I mentioned before, our focus uh, using these generative AI tools is to figure out inefficiencies and to look at how we can remove some of those inefficiencies, try to automate it, and obviously augment it with AI. Again, giving you one more example of how generative AI tools are leading to productivity increase is in the context of adding new team members to a project team. Typically, when we used to add team members to a project team, by the time they get productive, understanding the code, trying to understand the business problems to be solved, and then start writing code, that usually takes between four to five weeks. Now, we're using these kind of technologies, we have been able to reduce that under a week. And this is again significantly impacting the overall productivity increase for that individual team member, as well as the whole project, thereby having a exponential impact on the sprint velocity that we are able to attain. 
Well, that sounds tremendous. But you know, as with all things, I'm sure there's the flip side as well, right? Could you share a little bit more about some common misconceptions about the capabilities and limitations of AI? Working with customers, I think where we see good progress, especially in terms of scaling from POCs to production, is first starting with a perspective of how AI can augment the human and transform the existing processes versus you know, where AI can replace the human. The most common risk we see in deploying generative AI is the risk of hallucination and bias. We all know the models are non-deterministic and it's not always possible to completely predict what they will do in a given situation. By providing your own data instructions through techniques such as RAG and fine-tuning, one can further increase and reduce other risk by focusing the model on their specific use cases. To help customers, Amazon Bedrock, where builders can call different foundation models with a common API, has a guardrails feature in which allows a builder to implement safeguards that are tailored to their enterprise. These safeguards could, for example, be specifying topics to be avoided or automatically detecting and preventing queries or, or responses that fall into the restricted categories. Rajesh, our teams have been working together on a number of these generative AI projects out in the field. Well, would you like to share your experience in terms of in this area? Chinway, I agree with you about this particular concept. I believe it's a big myth that generative AI tools will make developers redundant and there will be no jobs for developers in the future. The reason this is not possible is because some of the reasons which you just mentioned. You talked about things like AI cannot replicate intelligence or creativity. AI cannot understand the domain context or it does not have the full contextual understanding. So it will be very important for developers to become business domain experts and understand the business problems to be solved. It's also important for the developers to dive deeper into more than coding. As you rightly mentioned about the security architecture, that's something which all the developers should know. And they have to get the big picture in terms of how to leverage these tools. By doing this, a technical person will become successful by looking at the business context, leveraging the right tools, using AI for increasing productivity, and focusing on the highly creative parts of solving the business problems. I want to reiterate that AI will not replace a developer, but there will be a developer who's using the AI tools will replace developers who are not using AI tools. Accelerating development of software, freeing up the time of senior developers to do other more value-added stuff. So it's not just to help people who cannot code to code, but it also helps experienced coders to do things much faster and with much less effort. My next question really is, are some main challenges and limitations of using AI for software development? Surely AI can't do everything, can it? That's a great question, Paul. And I'll classify them into two main categories, right? The first is the use of AI to generate software in itself. And the second is the embedding of AI in the actual system to be developed. For the first, the two common concerns that we're hearing from our customers is the question of intellectual property of the code generated acknowledgement of the original authors, the licenses, etc. And as well as the amplification of existing bugs and security issues in these software projects because these AI power coding assistants are actually trained on existing code. Uh, Amazon recognizes these customer concerns, right? And in the, in the developer pro tier for Amazon Q, it actually provides IP indemnity for its outputs. Amazon Q also provides a code customization feature which allows an organization to generate the code recommendations by making it aware of your internal enterprise libraries. These are entirely private to you, and AWS does not, does not store or use this content in any context that doesn't serve your enterprise. On the, on the second category about embedding AI as part of an application, a common topic that comes up is the black box nature of AI and how to implement and handle responsible AI policies. We've all seen examples of model hallucination that goes viral for the wrong reasons. And this is a real challenge for customers. AWS provides a comprehensive suite of services and tools in its AI offerings to support customers to develop AI responsibility. Besides the guardrails feature that I spoke about earlier, the Clarify features in Amazon SageMaker helps a builder to detect potential bias during preparation and after model training. Last but not least, the ML governance features also provides purpose-built tools to improve governance of the ML projects by providing tight control and visibility over the ML models. Yeah. 
Rahu, I think our teams have been working on the ground, you know, a number of customer projects. What are your thoughts around the challenges that we are seeing out in the field? So what we have been observing is though generative AI is extremely powerful and is giving us uh, initial gains uh, in productivity, there are still areas of improvement. For example, the end-to-end actions uh, are still not available in generative AI and they are more being used for doing point use cases. For example, uh, unit test case generation, as I mentioned earlier, is something that most of our developers and teams are doing. However, creating SIT test cases end-to-end is still something that we would want to achieve, but no tool in the market is able to to do that yet. Another example is where we generate code from Figma design screens. That is now part of our solution using our in-house build design systems and obviously assisted by the AI tools. However, taking that code that is being generated and being able to test end-to-end from a user perspective across different devices, across different browsers, that still requires a lot of human intervention. So there's a lot of these end-to-end scenarios which we have as part of the software development process or life cycle, which we would like to have, but is still a need to be worked upon. I got next question, Shunwei. Now, where does the development in generative AI leave junior or beginner developers entering the workforce today? Hmm. Well, Actually, I think it's more exciting than ever to join, you know, the technology industry, join the workforce. I think coding companions remove a lot of the repetitive and tedious to focus on then solving the underlying business challenges, improving the user experience, optimizing the resources on what it takes to run. I think the fundamentals of, having said that, I think the fundamentals of good architecture and software engineering principles, design patterns, these are still very essential because the tools might automate a good proportion of that. At the same time, builders, developers, they will need to pick up new skills such as prompt engineering and apply the technique strategies when it comes to incorporating Gen AI safely and responsibility into their applications. In November 23, AWS announced a global initiative called AI Ready, and it is a commitment to provide free AI skills training to 2 million people globally by 2025. In May this year, we also announced another program called AWS AI Spring Singapore. That's in one of the pillars, we aim to train 5,000 individuals in Singapore on AI skills between the periods of 24 to 26. This is in support of the government's goal to triple the pool of AI practitioners to 15,000 over the next five years. AWS provides a comprehensive set of skill trainings to all skill levels from C-suite leaders, developers, partners, non-professional builders, etc. So I think it's never been a better time to be a builder. I cannot agree more with with John Wei. If I go back many, many years ago in my days as a developer, right, I still remember it took me up to six months to understand the basics of how to write a good piece of code, Um, understanding the design patterns that go in, understanding how to make my code secure. Today's developers, in my view, have much more choices at their disposal. So all these generative AI tools have actually shifted the learning curve one level up from our perspective. And as Rajesh was mentioning earlier as well, the whole focus for these developers need to shift towards gaining more domain understanding, going more closer to what the customer's problems are and how they can solve it using software. And these generative AI technologies help and enable these developers to do that in much faster and more much more efficient way. By gaining proficiency of these new skills, the developers will also become extremely valuable assets to their teams and something that we talk in Timus about, which is being more fungible across different projects, across different capability stacks. Obviously, I think we all here in Timus and myself included are extremely excited by this generative AI revolution and what it brings because there's much more opportunities to take advantage of. We have also, as part of the training and capability build for our teams and engineers here in Timus, One of the things we have started to do is every new joinee needs to go through a prompt engineering training. Obviously, AWS has been great partners here, helping us to run these trainings for our previous batch of new joiners. And we continue to see the, these kind of new addition of skills to these developers really are helping them in their day-to-day jobs and taking the most advantage of generative AI. Thank you so much for sharing, Rahul. 
maybe if you shift our glance ahead, right, looking into the future, what future advancements can we expect and how might they further transform the industry? So I think we will continue to see model advancements accelerate at an exciting pace. You know, every other week you hear some new announcement that's interesting. A model aside, I think along with new architectures and patterns in guardrails, performance optimizations, the light will continue to evolve. There's a Gartner research that shows that by 2026, probably over 80% of enterprises are expected to have used generative APIs or generative AI-enabled applications. This is up from 5% in 2023. In fact, this year, we believe many of our AWS customers who have been experimenting with POCs will likewise move into production. In collaboration with our customers as they move from POC to production, uh, you know, our experience shows that the discussion shifts quickly from not just about the latest model, but really about what's fit for purpose, um, especially when you consider all the other factors involved in scaling to production, such as cost, security, resiliency, amongst others. Uh, customers who have used Amazon Bedrock uh, tell us that it's, it has enabled them to accelerate their journey from experimentation to production. Uh, Amazon Bedrock, in a nutshell, provides uh, one, a fully managed service, uh, builders a choice of high-performing foundation models from leading AI companies, uh, likes of Entropic, Meta, Mistral, uh, just to name a few. As long as a broad set of capabilities that you need to build uh, an entire generative AI application with security, privacy, and responsible AI in mind. And uh, as an example, one of the, uh, the recent features is Bedrock Knowledge Base, which allows customers access to a fully managed RAG capability, automating the whole RAG workflow without having to write custom code to integrate data sources and manage queries. Our focus this year will continue to help customers safely experiment with generative AI and then shift to production value as quickly as possible to help them realize their business benefits. So Chunwei, at Teamus, we are also doing the things which you mentioned in taking a pilot and then making it to production and doing it at scale. <laughs> so our goal is to make sure that we do it across a lot of customers, across enterprises, and ensure that they can scale up and they start to get real business value <laughs> coming out of the generative AI tools. <laughs> As I mentioned before, we are also operationalizing the next generation of software development lifecycle using Gen AI tools. <laughs> and we have seen a lot of potential which is coming out of that. From Teamus' perspectives, we expect a the advancements of AI in six different categories. I'll talk about the first three categories, and then Rahul, who is my colleague here, will talk about the other three ones. So the first big category is about explainable AI. We expect uh, the developers to understand the code base. Uh, Chunwei had mentioned about the black box concept, so that black box should go away, and the developer should be able to understand the code base which is generated by the tool, and they start trusting AI to make decisions better. The second big innovation will be about AI-driven DevOps, which we call as AI Ops. This all gets into how do you automate pipelines for continuous integration and deployment? How can you make the entire system more intelligent? How can you reduce downtime? How can you improve reliability? All using different types of AI tools. So a human is not required for day to run ops, but instead the AI tool will do most of it. And at some point of time, it will give you recommendations about what to fix. We believe the actual fix has to be done by the human being, but the AI can do all your analysis for you and make recommendations so that the developer or the technical person can make the right decisions in terms of what fixes needed to be done at the, develop at the production environment. The third big thing is about automating the software development lifecycle. We expect AI to automatically start doing more work. In fact, the vision is an AI should be able to read a user story or a technical specification. And based on that, it will create code automatically. And it should also be able to generate system integration test cases along with all the deployments and everything else. So at the end of it, the focus will be on more of relying on AI tools for these automation capabilities, for scaling up, for creating production-ready workloads, and making sure that we are taking large enterprise-level problems and solving it. Rahul will talk about the next three big insights we have. Thanks, Rajesh. I would also like to mention in terms of operationalizing these tools at scale, mm -hmm. and more effectively, we are going ahead and adopting agent frameworks. I think agent frameworks is going to be very, very powerful in the future. And you will have a lot of spe specialized agents doing a lot of these specific tasks for you. 
and you will be able to spin up and spin down in, uh, at will. Uh, so that is one of the sort of focus areas that we are going after. And also we believe uh, strongly in, in, in that sort of next step. The second area of focus is accelerating security left shift. Earlier, this has been implemented using practices like TDD, but with these tools for like Amazon Q, we have been able to sh accelerate this security sh shift left concept. As an example, we have been now being able to do security scan almost on a every almost on a daily basis within our sprints, which used to happen once at the end of the sprint before you deploy into production. So these kind of capabilities are now available for our developers and engineering teams. The third focus area is collaborative AI platforms. I think ultimately this collaboration is going to be very, very key, not just within the team, but between teams. And these AI platforms uh, are going to be really pushing the boundary of what's possible. And as, as I said before, uh, it will unlock a lot of different capabilities which were not available for these developers, specifically the junior developers who, uh, who joined the team and the workforce. Thank you so much. And if I may just throw out one final question, right? Would you have any final thoughts or word of advice to those who are considering leveraging generative AI? Maybe they're on the fence, maybe they are thinking of, you know, should they go on a broader rollout and they're not sure. What would you say to them? Well, I'll start with Core AWS. The Gen AI will revolutionize the way things are done, not just from a technology perspective, but from a business angle. And, you know, my team is uh, more than happy to engage and support customers who start with defining what is the problem statement we want to uh, address and then apply techniques, strategies to unpack that, right? And we can do it together with teamers, right? The big challenge about Gen AI is really how do you scale from POC to production? I think that's where the strong partnership between Teamers and AWS working collaborative with our customers can help them enable and fulfill their vision. My advice is to start using the AI tools. Don't wait. The reason is uh, there's a lot of interest at the board level as well as the C-suite about how can AI transform business models. So if you are in one of these large enterprises, use this as an opportunity. Test it out. As Chunwei mentioned, start with a proof of concept. Take a business problem and see how it can be solved using AI and use it to increase your own career because you can leverage this AI tool to showcase not only to the management, but it can go all the way up to the board level about how AI is being used. As Chunwe mentioned, we are here to help you. So you just contact us whenever you need. My advice would be like any other new technology which comes in the market and you adopt, the biggest challenge is to get quick wins and to get it fast. That creates more confidence in the teams around you and your stakeholders, and therefore you can get onto this transformation journey faster. So my advice would be select those specific use cases which have broad applicability across your enterprise, and then try to get to those quick wins as fast as you can. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chung Wei, Rajesh, and Rahul. We have come to the end of our podcast, Generative AI ushering in a new era of software development today. Thank you for tuning in.